Okay, I'd like to call to order the Law, Billings, and Code Enforcement Committee meeting of Tuesday, December 17th. Tonight we'll be, we'll be taking up resolution 88-122-19R. This is a resolution of the Common Council confirming the appointment of Marissa A. Franchini as Corporation Council. Being present, myself, Chair Joe Igo, members of the committee that are presently here, uh, Ginny Farrell and Wusu Inane. Uh, also, our what's your title, clerks? Senior legislative. Senior Asian. legislative. She's like city clerks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, Michelle Andre. And uh, if anybody wants to sign up for public comment, you're more than welcome. But that's only if it gets crowded. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, okay. Uh, we have our, everybody has a resume in front of them. I have read it. And I have no issues with it. I don't know if anybody has any questions that they would like to ask Marissa. And if, if not, right now, I'll let her have the floor and start. You know, if you want to give us why you want to do this or anything. I don't know. Sure, yeah. Uh, so thank you for taking up this resolution and for your, hopefully, your support. Uh, I've been with the Corporation Counsel's Office for uh, almost four years now, and I'm very excited about taking on this new responsibility and uh, <coughs> honored that the mayor not, uh, appointed me to leave the office. Um, you know, as you probably know, Bill Kelly's been the corporation counsel for the past several years and we've been on a good path. Um, we've had been keeping staff a little bit longer and all the trains are running on time. So what I plan to do is keep things moving forward and hopefully be as responsive as we can to all the city departments, including the common council. And one time, this always comes up, and I don't know if it came up in budget time this year, uh, but, and I don't think the, the law department went in front, of, in front of the finance committee, did they? They didn't even question the yeah. okay. But one question always come up, and Bill Kelly said they might have to do this uh, because they weren't filling them right away, and they were losing them. They entertain, and we're possibly going to entertain the use of uh, part-time attorneys again. Has that been discussed at all? Or? It comes up every now and yeah. again, but mostly you're, you're, from attorneys who want to work for us, but, that, but also full, want to keep their practices. Right now, right now we're fully staffed, besides okay. um, the vacancy that my promotion, um, assuming I get the promotion, <laughs> will um, will leave a vacancy. But we're already we've already started doing some interviewing because. You know, we have a, we keep a roster always of, of yeah, resumes, yeah. and because we do have, we've learned to sort of uh, work with the turnover that we have and prepare for it, and yeah. be better at cross training and keeping people in the pipeline. So we haven't really talked a whole lot more about the part time. Okay, okay. we don't want to talk about it tonight either. Oh no. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's something I'm open to. It's just I really haven't something I've thought about um, as of right now. Well, again, We're doing it, it, a lot it is of a budget transition. issue, and you know. Yeah, I'm. Not, I don't have a strong feeling either way as of right now, but it's just not something. It's not currently one of the fires. I'm well, you know out, that they used to do it for years. And, yeah, 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 for yeah, various yeah. reasons. I but, you know. Yeah, I can see how that would be helpful. Yeah, so I mean, you bring a lot of expertise, uh, experience in that obviously we don't get here. Absolutely. And. Uh, and they were trying to, with the last few years, I think they've given some boost trying to keep them, not as much as it hasn't kept them, really, a lot of attorneys. For right? our attorneys? Yes. Yeah, Bill has raised the starting salary, I think it's like 68 or 69 now, which is sort of competitive. I mean, it's, a, it's competitive with other public service jobs in the area. Except for the state. Except for the state. But for starting salaries at the state, I believe it's 78. And then you get on the civil service track, yeah, and you get your lay raises. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's hard for us to compete with that, but I think we have a really good crew right now. I'm expecting a lot of them to stay. We heard there was a, I, I just got invited something today from the, oh no, it was uh, is Andrew's appointments. And he appointed a girl by the name of Valerie, who was a yes. deputy. I don't yes. remember. How yes, long ago you remember that? her, right? Yeah. Yeah. She, got she left here to be do foil for the governor's mm -hmm. office. And, and now she's got, just got a promotion to be like a deputy. Yeah. Deputy Council, on like it, the in the, on the second floor, I saw that as well. I texted her. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy for her. But people go from our from our office to do great things, and they always have. It's great experience. So, yeah. Hi, Darcy. Um, so for, for the record, also uh, present is uh, Council Member, uh, future auditor, uh, Darcy Clears. So. 
just had a few questions and nothing important. We were just and talking. So cool. do you have anything um, different that you'd like to bring into the law department? I mean, obviously, there, it's kind of a, there's not too many different things that you want to do, but there might be some different leadership, especially as the first woman in this role, um, some different initiatives that you might be interested in doing. Yeah, you know, the employee retention is like, is gonna be a big focus of mine. I, I think that there are things we can do to try to keep attorneys happier longer, including like a promotion track, mm -hmm. you know, the small, whatever raises we can do, with shifting around the salary lines within the department, um, you know, for continuing educations and trainings. I think we can do more to have like a community atmosphere, like within the department, like to be, feel like we're more of a team. Because so I think, at least for, I think I, I feel like a lot of the job is who you work with and how you, how you feel about going in there every day. So I hope to sort of foster that kind of community in the department. Um, Bill started doing some training, citywide trainings, and I want to continue and grow that program. Um, so we do, I, I'm doing a procurement training for the whole city, uh, I believe in February. So I want to continue sort of doing those outreaches as the department, some, some affirmative outreach as far as like, what do you guys want to be trained on? How can we, how can we do some continuing education for everybody? Well, yeah, he mentioned continuing. Do you pay for the uh, continuing education, you know, or do you pair up with some departments, the state or anything like that? For, that our, for our attorney yeah. credits? Yeah. We will pay for our attorney's CLE, but we do encourage them to seek out free and reduced costs. Okay. Uh, so we, we are all members of the County Bar Association and they offer oh. a number of free okay. trainings to members, so I always encourage our attorneys to attend those free ones. Yeah. Um, but every once in a while there are really relevant trainings that we'll pay for. We'll send, we'll send attorneys to. Because municipal law is such a niche topic that if there is a, a, a CLE that's on target, uh, we'll gladly okay. pay for attorneys to go. So that's something we budget for. And then jump in. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to start off with, so what has been my, the most proudest moment at a court council for your time there? Wow, that's, that's a really good question. You know, the media thing that pops into my mind is, so I handle a lot of our tech, or all of the tech certiorari work, which is the um, commercial real estate in the city. If you cha They challenge their tax assessment. It's through a different type of proceeding than, like, if you challenged your house. That would be uh, a proceeding in front of the bar, the BAR, the Board of Assessment and Review. If you're a commercial property, you challenge it through filing a Supreme Court petition. And so it's basically like any other litigation. And so we, I handle, you know, usually we, we used to get about 50 cases a year. So it's a pretty high volume area that our office handles. It's kind of not, like no one really knows about it. But um, so my, my proudest moment is that the first thing that pops into mind is that I won a motion to dismiss on a tax case that I was not expecting to win Mobile at all. oil? What was the, that? Mobile oil down the port? No. It's funny that you say that it was in the port. That most of them come out of the port, almost everybody down there. It was, it was a property in the port that I, I moved to dismiss, basically, sort of on a technicality. They didn't have the authorization of the owner to file the petition. No. And Judge Walsh said, you're right, and dismissed it. Huh. So I, I, was, I, was, I was pretty happy. <laughs> I was pretty surprised with that decision. But, um, but you know, it, the great thing about this city is, you know, every day you, nev you never know what you're going to get. And the, we do, like, some t a lot of types of practices of law, you don't get those f feelings of moving the ball forward, accomplishing something. But I literally have that feeling every day. And it's why I love what I do. I mean, just today, earlier, I was talking about the chicken crisis that um, landed in my lap today. And, you know, it, it's just, it's something new every day. I'm the patrol officer. I had how many 14 chickens? Ten remember? chickens. Ten chickens. And in pet, in pet carriers. <laughs> Like oh, up on North chickens. Allen Street. And, so, and I know the house this guy used to have the pot belly pigs and everything. So it's got a, that's in my ward. On North Allen. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote down the address, I can tell you. Almost. I'm not exactly where it, yeah, where it is. sure where exactly where it is. But yeah, she had ten chickens on the porch and cat car carriers. But you know, that's neither here nor there. But you know, every day our office handles such diverse issues that it's it's just it's all over the map in the map and I have a great team. I know you love working with the council, so. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to be holding on to this job. <laughs> well, just on that, on that point, just, can you just talk a little bit about what you think you see your role when dealing with the council from this position? 
Sure. You know, um, in my mind, I think, you know, we have an attorney that represents every board in the city. So, and we give those boards legal advice all the time. You guys are a little bit different because you have your own counsel, and I think that that's a good, it's a good thing for you guys to have some independence. I'm glad you have your own counsel. Um, but we, you are our client just like every other department is at the same time. So if you need an opinion, if you need a training, if you need guidance on a contract document, like we are, my door's always open, my phone's always, you have my phone number. So I consider you guys, you know, someone, a, cl a client that we need to service when you, but I leave it in your lap to let us know what you need because you do have your own attorney. So with other boards and other departments, I think we're more, we're just more involved because of the nature of, of our work. I'm all set, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Questions? Questions. Congratulations. Thank you, congratulations to you. Thank you. And I see you have your parents in the back. Yeah, my fan club. That is just <laughs> a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, really, you have uh, people who have poured into you and um, prompted you to reach for the stars. And oftentimes people don't have that. And so just thinking about some of the people who work, will be working under you, and you talk about um, continuing education credits, mm -hmm. but just wanted to hear more about um, your approach to empowering your team to, to do more with less. Yes. Um, how you go about doing that. And then the follow up to that is, uh, we hear as council members all the time about the morale in City Hall, um, that it's not always good. Um, the, the environment, the culture is not always good. And so in your leadership role, you will be helping to set the tone for a different culture here. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit about what that culture will be in your office and then how that you think that will influence other parts of the city, yeah. city hall? Yeah, absolutely. So in my office, I think that's a great way to put into better words that what I was trying to say about morale and teamwork and feeling like a team. I mean, that's the kind of community that I want to build within our department. And I think we do that by, you know, doing doing other things together, doing cross trainings, getting all in, in the room at least on a weekly basis and having that face to face time and knowing what everyone else is doing and mm -hmm. asking each other for advice and doing these cross trainings. Um, we have a great. I, I don't think we have a morale problem in the law department. I think everybody wants to be paid more. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's, I'm not gonna lie and say everyone's happy with their pay, but I do think that our attorneys love what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and they are empowered. I mean, I love that word as well because I tell my attorneys, you know, I want to empower you. I want you to take a leadership role in your world and rely on us to catch you or guide you or help you when you need it. Um, so that's sort of my plan going forward is that we all do work very independently in the law department, but at the same time, getting all in the room, to, in the room together on a weekly basis, having those one-on-ones on a weekly basis, putting them on the calendar so that you, ha you don't feel like you're out there on your own, just like doing your own work. Mm -hmm. Because I have felt like that myself in this office before because we do work so independently. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's sort of my plan going forward is to empower, keep empowering the attorneys, but try to support them as much as they can, mm -hmm. as much as we can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I worked for uh, Bill Drafting for a lot of years, and one thing that really changed a lot is because they used to all work in these little cubby holes, and they came in and they opened it up. <coughs> So a new person would be sitting next to the. Yeah, you know, we have that problem person. as well. Oh, I know, and it's just the. Yes, we have a we have one person sitting on one floor, to, I know. and I don't like people just like, and so each it's attorney, we've, I sort of have taken a different approach. Like, one there's one person on my staff who likes to have a face to face on a weekly basis, run down everything they're doing, so that I have situational <coughs> awareness, and everyone, all the leadership staff knows what's going on with that area of law. Um, you know, other attorneys like to stop by on a daily basis or email me. You know, people work differently. Mm -hmm. But I do like having that weekly staff meeting where everybody's in the room together. 
because everybody needs to know what's going on. What, mm -hmm. what are the high notes of your week? What are the low notes of your week? What do you need help with? So. And the other thing, for years I discussed with, well, with Phil Calderon, who kind of said it didn't let it happen, but I think we finally had some movement as far as different titles. So you knew. Yes. You, yes. You, have, you have a few of them now, right? We and do, you, and I, uh, that is something I kind of want to change a little bit because Bill didn't really do the title thing. He just kind of wanted everybody to. Yeah. Well, you know, it's easier that, and I think, I don't know if you do evaluations yearly. Everyone's at City Hall is supposed to get one, I believe. Uh, but, another thing I'm hoping to change. Oh, you, you mean you don't do them? You, you want the to do them? The council started doing theirs. Pardon me? The council started doing theirs. They did mine last Okay. Evening. Yes, so, everybody is, uh, is required to do one before anyone gets a raise now. Because, mm -hmm. you know what? They learn by it, you learn by it, and Absolutely. it gives, gives the city a little bit of protection on things, too, absolutely. you know. So. Yes, so that's, that's something I absolutely want to start doing, because okay. we don't do that now. And I want to make those, make a track more of a form, I make, make more of a formal track for people. Do you hire, I know it's been difficult hiring, so do you go out and look for, say, environmental attorney at the time, if it's needed, or is everybody kind of... Because I think because the experience gap, you have to kind of take what's not without it, it there. It definitely I mean, depends you know, on who's the available pool. At the time. Yeah, yeah, the pool that we get. Like we recently hired an amazing land use attorney who what's her name Amy. Again? Oh yeah, she's working with planning or zoning or yes. whatever. Yes. And I wish we had her earlier in the rezone process because she we just and we've, we're fully staffed now, which we haven't been in a while. So she's had this ability to focus on, we have so many land use issues in this city right now. It's a mm -hmm. time of change for us. So she's really been able to focus on those issues. She's been able to work with individual members of you guys even. She talks to Michael Ryan quite often mm -hmm. um, on it, if you have specific issues related to land use. So it's been fantastic having her. I wish we had her earlier. But um, if she were to leave, I would absolutely go out and try to find somebody uh, yeah. who had some land use background. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to uh, dealing with unions, what role uh, do you play as a city attorney? Or like yeah. union negotiations sure. and contracts? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I just went to my first negotiation yesterday, first time. So we have outside counsel who um, sort of manages all of our 13 union contracts, but there's a law department representative present at all the negotiations so that we know what's going on, so that HR knows what's going on. Um, we get final say on any settlement before it's offered, um, along with the budget department. Uh, so we review all of our proposals before they go out, and then we review all the proposals that come in from the unions. So, yeah. We just settled yeah, just, one. Just to follow up that question, too, as it relates to the outside attorney dealing with unions, let's say county council members wanted to push for uh, the city attorney to be their replacement. Do you see any conflict with that situation? Instead of hiring an outside attorney to deal with union negotiations, it, can we just, what if we were to make a recommendation to actually have a city attorney uh, negotiate on our behalf? You could do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, our outside counsel is a statewide expert. She knows, is intimately familiar with all the provisions sure. and all the players. And it's also really, it's really good to have a little bit of a distance when you're negotiating because city staff can be, you know, a little close with the union members and the union representatives, whereas she's not. Um, you know, we want to settle contracts. We want to give raises that we can pay for, but. Uh, it's a little bit easier for her to come to the table and say yes and no than it would be for someone on the inside. And, and the, the way we, we lose attorneys, that's another thing. You hire some the turnover. things good like that to turn over for the money these people can make, you know. Yeah, the negotiations sometimes drag on so long that it's nice to have that consistency. Yeah, but just uh, the amount of money that we pay for outside attorneys it's uh, something I'm going to look into. I, I mean, it's I think something I'm going to look job. into as well. Yeah, and I appreciate that because, uh, you know, some of these outside attorneys are being paid $500 an hour, uh, and most of some, some of these meetings, they just say, you know, uh, prolonging like cars too. meetings oh, and whatnot. God. No, uh, all right. Well, most uh, of ours are on retainer, no? Yes. Yeah, so, okay, retainers, yeah. We so,
that's something that I hope that you look into. I, look into I think there are areas that we could bring things back inside. I'm not going to lie and tell you that we can handle all the litigation that our outside counsels handle. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that. But I think there are opportunities that we could take more things in the house, especially if we retain certain attorneys that we have on staff now. Awesome. We've got some good people, and I really do think we could take some, some stuff in-house. In That's awesome. Thank you. I'm all set. Do have any motions? Yet? Oh, no, hold it. We have some uh, people would like to speak in public comment. Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Nobody? Uh, you know, I do want to say that I, I really do. Uh, we're working with Parisa. Um, she is very patient with everyone. Like, I can just it. walk in and, and just drop something on her. She's immediately attentive and gives a great explanation so that I fully understand, you know, what I have to relate to other people usually. So I do appreciate the time that she takes to um, speak with people individually, you know, like make an appointment or chase her down or anything. Don't tell anybody that though. Just, <laughs> just you. <laughs> I, I, have found that, I have found that too, so. She's a great choice. I'll make a motion to move it out of the committee with a favorable recommendation. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, so passed. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many more should we do? Thank you. Good on that, baby. Second. Congratulations. See you guys. See, I like this. All right, you like these meetings? Yeah. This is, uh, you know, I get myself all nervous.